that I think makes poker so remarkable is I don't believe there's been any other card game, and there have been awfully popular card games in, in, the, in the long, long history of cards since the 14th century, that had as much impact on literature, art, and music as poker, all three fields. I mean, it just is really great. There, there are amazing poker tunes, which is the reason that we're doing this initially. I've been collecting poker tunes for years and years, and so have you, and, and, uh, and they're great fun, and, and wonderful fiction about poker as well, and, and film about poker. It's just, a, it's become really compelling. I thought I'd start out with a little demonstration. Um, you know, I, I, here's the thing you may not know about, maybe you do. But most decks of cards come with a couple of jokers, and one is called the Joker, and the other one's called the Guarantee card. I don't know if you've ever been familiar with that. And usually I think it's a manufacturer's guarantee about certain imperfections in the card, and if you find them, their guarantee is they'll replace the cards for you. But I want to play a little poker with you guys and make a slightly different kind of, uh, a slightly different kind of guarantee. Uh, I guarantee that I'm going to play you a game a five-card draw, and I guarantee that I'm going to win. And of course, you guys are not worried because I'm not asking you to put up your own money. So this is not exactly the highest stakes situation you can imagine, but it still should be pretty cool. Jeff, can I get you to do this? I'm one of those. There's a lot you can learn about somebody by the way they shuffle cards. So it's interesting. Yeah. It's pretty good. Good solid ripple. Interesting. And I'm going to deal out a couple of hands to you. But I'm only going to deal out four cards instead of the traditional five in five card draw. OK, and I'm going to ask you not to look at them yet. But you can gather them in if you feel more comfortable having them closer to you. And watch me, by the way. Watch me scrupulously as I deal the cards to make sure that this is honest and above board. Ha, ha, ha. Now, you each have four cards. And because you know, in most cases, know me personally, but know that I have some sort of reputation <laughs> as being capable with a deck of cards, I'm going to make you an unusual offer. Right now, before we complete the, the deal, I'm going to say to you, if you think perhaps I was stacking the cards, perhaps I was dealing from the bottom, that somehow I dealt myself a better hand than any of you, I'm going to allow you the opportunity to switch your cards with mine. And I'm going to allow each player to do that. JJ, without looking at your cards, without looking at mine, do you want to switch for my hand? No. No. Jeff. Yeah, I'll switch. You're going to switch. Remember that this happened. Don't look at him. We'll play some here. Willie, would you like to switch cards? Would you like to play your own? I'd like to play uh, my own. OK, that's fine. John? Me too. You would too. Eddie, would you like to switch, or would you like to play mine? I'll play yours. Oh. OK, you'll play mine. I'll play yours. Now I'm going to make you another unusual, another unusual opportunity. Remember I said I'm going to guarantee that I win. I'm now going to deal you all your last cards, right? and I'm going to play my card. I'm not going to be able to change whatever that card is. But I'm now going to give you all the options of looking at this card and deciding whether you want that card to join your hand or not. What poker player would be crazy enough to do that? The answer is me. JJ, you can now look at your hands. Take a look at them one at a time. We'll do this. I'm going to hold them up. Maybe the camera wants to see them as well. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to look. OK, and I'm now going to offer you this chance. You know what? That's fine. Do you want to add this card to your hand or no. not? You don't. I'm going to give you a chance. We'll discard this to take any card from the talent, from the remainder of the deck, take one out, and have it join your hand. Anyone. OK. But do it quick. Oh. <laughs> no, take your time. It's fine. <laughs> well, the card you may be looking for could be in somebody else's hand. I don't know. Jeff, okay. hold yours close to the vest. Don't let anybody see them. All right? I'm going to put these down. Here's your choice. Would you like this card, Jeff, to join your hand or not? No. No. I'm going to discard it, and I'm going to give you the option of taking any one of these cards to add to your hand. Would you reach across and take any one out from the remainder of the deck? You know, you could be beating me with two cards, you know. Uh, Willie, here's your card. Would you like to keep it or change it? Uh, uh, change it. Change it. Uh, take out any card. Take out any card. I'm going to discard this. Take out any card and have it join your hand. Nothing is uh, helpful, so I'll just take. You're fine. Take the highest card. That's great. John, 
Take a look at your cards. Would you like this card to join your hand or not? No. No. All right. I'm going to ask you to take one of these as well. But understand these options and understand my guarantee. You've chosen cards. You've switched cards. The cards have been shuffled. They've been cut. They've been dealt. But I guarantee I will win you in a hand of draw. All right. All right. Last chance for you. Eddie, take a look at your cards. Do you want to include this card in your hand? Oh, I do not. You do not. We'll discard that and take any one of the remaining cards. Um, I can't really see them. Eh, whatever. Uh, right, okay. So there we go. Five hands of poker and mine. JJ, turn them over. Let's see what you have. Trip queens. Trip queens, and you're complaining. What kind of guy is that? Trip queens. What do you have, Jeff? Pair of eights. Pair of eights. Well, I can understand why you're a little perturbed. It's a bad hand. Willie. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Trip nines. Trip nines. Again, a good What's hand. A bad hand? Got pretty good hands in a poker game. Pair of sevens for Riley. Trip fives. Trip fives. Trip fives for Eddie G. Let's just take a look and see what I have here. Oh, this is not what I expected either. But I did make a guarantee. And remember, Eddie could have had my cards. And JJ did switch, meaning that at one point Jeff, I had hit you. cards. I switched. Oh, Jeff switched. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to drag this out. But I do think that uh, oh, there's a very the serious chance. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm going to give him my five. Well, I, I should point out there won't be too much in the way of explanation here. Just <laughs> <laughs> shocking. You can actually wind up cheating people from the beginning of the time that they think about going the game, going to the game, till after the game is finished. And, and one of the ways hustlers always used to work, you know this, on trains especially, is they'd play for cigars, they'd play for drinks, they'd make it look incredibly casual, and then it would build up into a dollar or two, and soon it would be like JJ's right. game with hundreds of dollars. And then you can wind up with proposition bets, winning money after the cards go back into the case. So there are lots of opportunities, and we'll talk a little about some of them as well. So let's say you had a card on the top of the deck that you wanted to keep, like, say, the Ace of Spades. And so the idea <laughs> would be, like, if all you guys were at the game, I would simply deal the cards to everybody, but I would get the Ace of Spades. So that's called second dealing. That's the idea. And what actually happens, I mean, this does feel a little awkward for me, actually telling you what I'm doing. You know, so the that's Ace of first, isn't it? The idea is that the Ace of Spades is on the top of the deck, and I'm dealing underneath <laughs> the Ace of Spades. So I'm making it look like I'm dealing with top card, but I'm keeping the ace of spades. That's right? fantastic. Well, that's, that that is so that, that's why that's called second dealing. Wow. By the way, if, if you're playing stud poker, it can also be done in a game of stud. Literally keeping the ace of spades on the top and making right. it look like you're dealing with top card from the top, even slower, even burn bigger, your hand. It's a bigger move. It's, 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 it's just a bigger move. Okay. Can you do it even with the, with the ace face up? Oh, yeah. So this is, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, with a border deck, it's a little better, but this is, this is what it would look like. It seems like it would be almost impossible that you're keeping the ace of spades in place. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> wow. Good, good. They're a child's play for Ricky. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, we were just talking about Hold'em uh, with Willie, so I wanted to show uh, a scenario that's pretty interesting. I think I'll just get into it rather, you know, the cards have all been shuffled. So I'm going to just give them a, another shuffle and deal you. Uh, just you and I will play. Let's say it's the end of a poker tournament, literally the end of the tournament. We're playing heads up. It's for all the money. And take a look at your cards and, and we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll cards, play. So. You can look at As a matter of fact, hold your cards up to the camera. Let the camera see them. Let the camera see your cards. Listen, you. No, 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 I'm serious. Well, you're, 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 don't, don't. I was showing you my cards, okay? okay. I feel already that I'm being taken. Put them down, and now taken. we're going to bet. No, okay. no, no, we're going to bet. I, I, well, I want to bet you uh, right now. It's your bet. So let's say at this point, uh, you, you, would, you would now make a bet, right? Okay. Right. So you, you, would you make a sizable bet? Yes, I would, make, would. A, I would make a sizable bet. I would, I would, bet, uh, I would bet three times the blind. Right? Three times the blind. Okay, so it's a real bet. And let's say that I call you for the moment. Okay, right. so now we're going to deal the flop, all right? So let me burn a card, all right, and, and, uh, and deal the flop. Well, it's not such an impressive flop, but maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so now 
Uh, would you be betting again at this point? I would bet. Uh, I would bet the three times the blind. You right bet now. three times the blind mm -hmm. again. Okay, so let's say, let's say I'll call you again, um, <laughs> and, and, and let's burn a card, and then, uh, and then, uh, and I'm going to ask you once again if you're going to bet. <laughs> I would tell you I checked you. You checked to me. Yeah. And now I bet really heavily. Yeah, probably. And what would you? Bet? <laughs> I I probably. Uh, I. In the in re, real life, in real life. If, I, if it wasn't you, right? If it wasn't me, and we were just playing all these in. cards, Absolutely. you're all in, yeah, because you believe you have the nuts, and, and you well, do. Well, close. Yeah. I don't have the nuts, but I've, I've close enough. Well, no. Why wouldn't you have the nuts in your mind? You think is there some hand that could possibly beat you at this point? Well, a three. Do you <laughs> think I'd be in the pot if I had a three at this point in my hand? Well, at the beginning, at the beginning, my druthers would be that you would have folded. Right. If I, got my first so, no, no, no. I mean, and this is very much part of the psychology. Yeah, with a, with a if, if I had a three, and, and I, you know I can't have a pair of threes because there are three right, threes on the right. table. And I started out of the gate betting. So right, I and you started out of the gate betting. Wouldn't have, you wouldn't have stayed in with a three. There's no way so. that I could have stayed in with a three. So right. clearly you do have the nuts because I wouldn't have stayed in with a three. Right. And I'm telling you right now, honestly, that I don't have a three. Right. Or you could have um, sixes. Well, that's true. Great I can have sixes, and that sixes I would have a full over house. threes. Right. You know, Absolutely. Better hand yeah. Than my crummy hand. Yeah. Okay. There's there's things that could beat me. Yeah. There's I, there's three hands right now. Right. And yeah, that's very smart analysis. But again, you have to say to yourself, you know, I I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have. Uh, you you could have stayed in sixes. with sixes. Yeah. And you could have stayed in with tens, jacks, queens, aces. Right. But maybe. the fact is that you know exactly one of the cards in my hand. I do because I saw you glimpse my card in my hand. Yeah. All right, so now you have to use that material as well. How do I know that you know what I have? But you know that I have a jack. Right, right. right. Well, because you, you know, you went Because like I happen to flash the jack. Like, okay, right. but this is also important psychologically. Absolutely. All right, and in a real game, it might have been even more subtle than that. So you know that if I have a jack, I can't have a pair of sixes, and you know I'm not staying in on jack six, and you know I'm not staying in on jack three, so you have the damn nuts. So, you know, I'm using all of this information in trying to hustle you. I've singled you out as the target. And I know you're a good poker player, and I know you saw that card. And I know at this point you know I'm not going to be in the game with jack six, and I'm not going to be in the game with jack three. So you do have the I mean, there's nothing that can be. Anyway, you're going all in. I'm going all in. Let's deal the, uh, deal the river. I burn a card, and there's the river. And now you show your hands. What do you have? I have kings. So the only thing that could beat your four threes and a king are my four threes and an ace. And an ace, and there's the money. So, you know, well, we're going to talk about things on all sorts of different levels, but I wanted to ensure for people who, who played some serious hold'em that there was a, an unusual scenario for that as well yeah, that I had come fantastic. up with. Maybe we could get uh, maybe we could get some chips in, and let me try to explain this to you. Um, yeah, let's let's just continue on. This might work and it might not. Um, but if we had some chips in the game, see, this is an interesting thing as well. Let's let's bring in a few more, even if we have some, a lot of chips, and let's say that we we're playing in a game. I and mean, this is a situation we talked about before. The psychology of this. Let's, let's leave them right here. And let's say we were playing legitimately, and there was really a great, honest player in the deck, in the game. All right, really a great, honest player. We had all these chips in the game. And JJ, let's say you were that player. Okay, so it's the end of the pot. You've won all of that money. Uh, take your money. So you, you would probably do something like that, and you would rake in the money. Okay, and in just that action, I want to show you how you could bust out an honest player from the game. I don't know if you saw this because it was a little subtle, but in just that moment, JJ, this is really strange, you would have no idea anything happened in this, and I would suddenly say, wait a minute, you're cheating. There, there are only three aces in the deck. I think you're holding out. I want you to very carefully stand up, very carefully, and you will see on the seat of your chair that I've managed to get that last ace. Take a look into the chair. And now get that card and turn it over. And that's the ace of clubs. So think about the, how devastating this is. You're a straight, honest player, but you're too good. You're too good for me. All right? So that's what I've been able to do, is actually to bust you out. I mean, think about that. What does is, what is this wow. guy think? Not only is he going to be thrown out of the game, but all his friends now think that he's a cheat. I mean, it, it, the concept is truly a crazy idea. 
So here's how this works. I mean, it, it takes a certain amount of skill, but I purposely dealt the, the, the I, I purposely had the chips placed away from JJ. Stand up again, and I'll show you what I did. As JJ goes up and reaches for his chips, I actually able to flip the car just like that, that. Right. Wow. Right. onto his wow. chair. Right. He sits down, and I don't even have to do with this deal. I can wait four deals later and bust you out any time that I want. Wow. <laughs> But you want to do it this deal because I just won the chips, well, right? Well, I think there's a possibility. Yeah. That, wouldn't <laughs> yeah. <be a> <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. That wouldn't be a bad idea. This is in terms of what I was saying before, a gambler, Eddie, would follow the natural actions of people. He doesn't want to show more skill or, or ostensibly less skill than anyone in the game with him. So he really right. wants to follow this, uh, right. follow this just a little. I do that too, like the little, the, the little overhand yeah. shuffle as well. Well, I do that often when I'm asked to cut. If you do that little overhand shuffle, it's, it's far more thorough. And, and if somebody was trying to manipulate the cut, it's a good way to deal with it. So I've learned a little something about you. And, and now I'm going to do something that, that, that's, um, again, odd. Before you mentioned uh, dealing uh, the second card off mm -hmm. the deck, and I think somebody brought up bottom dealing which is actually one of those really mysterious things. And I'm going to do a strange thing for you here, which is to show you how I, I actually practice uh, to do something for a bottom deal. So if we were playing in a game, I wouldn't want to deal anything so obvious for me uh, as we did before, uh, a royal flush or something. So let's say I still want a good hand, um, any one of you. Should I deal jacks, queens, or kings? Which of those three? Queens. Queens, okay. Queens, and, and remember, the cards were shuffled. This is going to be easy for, for Eddie to see. Um, from the shuffled pack of cards, uh, I'm just going to go very, very slowly and actually jog up the queens for a bottom deal. So uh, they must be uh, all grouped together at some point. There's one we don't need to, uh, a joker. And there are, uh, indeed, four queens. So I'm going to place the four queens here. And you're going to actually see that I do have I do have four queens on the bottom mm -hmm. of the deck, and now I'm going to deal them for myself in this. Well, one more thing. This is going to make it a little harder for me, uh, but easier for you guys to follow. I'm going to reverse them. Okay. So this is this is a really odd concept, but you can see that I have four queens reversed at the bottom of the deck. Uh, Willie, let's say we had people at the poker game. Eight, seven, six. You pick uh -huh. the number. Seven. Seven people at the game. And John, you tell me which hand, not the dealer, because this is the way I'd be doing it if I were cheating in a game, which of those seven people should have the hand of the, uh, the four queens? The fourth. The fourth. So I'm going to deal from the bottom. Oh, we should talk about when you came over and wanted me to show you a bottom dealing for a movie you're going to be in. <laughs> but remember, it's seven hands, okay. and I'm going to try to deal the queens into the fourth hand. <laughs> That's the concept. Okay. So this is a little tricky, but since they're face off, uh, it'll be easy for you to see what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can imagine if the cards were face down, you should probably have not the slightest idea that these cards were coming off the bottom of the deck. So even though you know the queens are face up, it's, it's still a surprise. And then even dealing the last card, there should be nothing, even when you're not dealing the bottom, nothing that looks any different. So I should point out what's happened here. You've all shuffled the cards. You've mentioned the number of hands in which I could deal. You mentioned which of those hands should get the winning hand of the four queens. But what I want to know is, how the hell was I able to do this? <laughs> wow. 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 OK. Four aces. Wow. <laughs> Are you, f are you a fan of deliberate mistakes? Indeed I am. <laughs> They're the only kind one should ever make. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we've been um, talking about crooked games a lot. You were telling me a story um, about a guy trying to keep a, ga a crooked game secure, um, a guy with a razor. Oh. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to tell that story. But no, it's a I'm happy to. It's a great uh, story. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a kind of great story, a guy that comes out. And it's very much like the lyrics of uh, one of the songs that we have on, on the album, too, Darktown Poker Club. And I, I talk about it a little on the liner notes. But this is kind of a great concept that, you know, you want to ensure an honest game. And so this hustler takes out a razor and opens up the blade. And it's just sharp as all hell. And he puts it on the table and he says, there'll be no cheating in this game. 
and then he uses the reflective edge of the razor <laughs> as a shiner to read the cards that he's that's dealing that's in the that's other. That's <laughs> that's and then there's another version, there's always topping that, there's another version with a gambler's gun where you can do the same thing in the reflection of a gun. But, but just the idea of calling attention to the very thing you're using to hustle. Wow. It's really great. And there, there are any number of, um, and, and poker lawyer, any, any number of wonderful scenarios with the razor. One, one, another one that I recall is, uh, is uh, a guy who wielded a razor in a game. Uh, this was probably in the 1880s. I think it's in the Thompson Street Poker Club, a wonderful book. Um, and, and this guy uh, is playing somebody who has uh, four nines, and he has three, three aces and a three in his hand. And the guy says, I win. And he takes the razor and just very carefully shaves off the two extra pips from the three. He says, I think my four of a kind. <laughs> you see this brand new razor I got a chopper yesterday. I'm going to pass it amongst you with a set of my rules you must follow as you play. Hey, hey, keep your bony hands upon the table while you're dealing, please. Anything goes wrong, I'm going to steal. Yeah, dark top, dark top. Yeah, okay. Right, which, uh, you're doing the Phil Harris version. But that was originally uh, written by Burt Williams and his partner in 1913. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, 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 I, yeah, it's great stuff. So. Great stuff. Who inspired my character in Chicago, Mr. Cellophane? Indeed. Yeah. Oh. Indeed. That was based on, Bert, it was a shout out, if you will, to Burt Williams' Bert Williams. song, Nobody. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Oh, you know, here's another. Burt Williams did, one of the greatest routines that Burt Williams ever did was a silent routine, a poker routine, where the whole thing, I once had a wonderful friend of mine, Danny Dew, who was a... Uh, a magician, and his wife, Melba Dew, who's still alive in her 90s. Melba Dew, who's a vaudeville sand painter. She would make wow. pictures wow. with colored sand, well, and, and, uh, and she's just great. That is a lost art. It is, <laughs> and, and sadly so. But, but he did for me perfectly, Danny, this piece of Burt Williams just opening. It was a silent piece, the poker game of him just looking at his poker hand. And this went on for about five minutes, just the reactions <laughs> to opening this beautiful silent piece, which was one of his money pieces. W.C. Field said Burt Williams was the funniest man that ever lived. And, you know the, the last half of that line? <laughs> the funniest man who ever lived and the saddest man he ever met. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you ever do bottoms, uh, deal bottoms? I remember you came over one day for some lessons. Yeah, that. No, oh, that, yeah, well, that yeah. was for another film I ended up not doing. But no. um, yeah, I remind, actually, that day when I came over to ask you to teach me the bottom deal reminds me of this story that happened on Boogie Nights that I don't even know if you remember. But, I, you know, the reason my character in that movie was into magic was because I was into magic, and so Paul Anderson wrote the script to, you know, to reflect that. <laughs> the porno star turned magician. Yeah. See, I always thought that was patterned after my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to, you know, I would read books like everyone does for card tricks and practice them, whatever. And, and I used to occasionally get him to do one. He's very reticent, I must say. And, uh, and one day I, I got the book and I, oh, this is a great one. This is a great one. I'll show Ricky this one. And I came out of my trailer so excited because, you know, I had just learned it, and I said, Ricky, i got to show you this thing I just learned. He's like, what do you mean you just learned it? I said, just in my trailer, I just learned this thing. i to show you this amazing thing. And he was like, hmm. I was like, what? Why the face? What's the matter? And he's like, well, I usually practice a trick in private for at least one year before showing anyone. <laughs> and I just learned this like 30 seconds before. <laughs> I'm oh, proud of myself. And then actually in the movie, I had to do sleight of hand in front of you. And they just gave me a bunch of props, like magic props. And one was a ring set that I had, actually had no idea <laughs> how to do. So I had to perform it one on one for Ricky on camera without actually knowing the trick. Well, at and all. the thing is that, you know, this was a real scene in the film, a boy scene in the film. And I was trying so hard not, not, not to break. And finally, it just was gone. I, mean, I just could not control myself any longer. You know what I want to ask you? Since you just did the trick where you threw the card mm -hmm. underneath, underneath JJ, the early part of your career was based on a very odd skill. Mm -hmm. Like when you were the early appearance of Mike Douglas, throwing cards. Throwing cards, yeah, right. Well, yeah. How, did this, how did that come about? 
Cardinals at, weapon. At Toady Field. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it came from being a kid in Brooklyn throwing baseball cards. Literally, that, that's what it came yeah. from. That and the fact that there were some magicians who threw a kind of heavier cardboard scaling cards into their audience as souvenirs. Uh, people like Thurston and Alexander Herman, the great magicians of their day, did that. But, but I, I kind of combined it as a kid, you know, winning baseball cards. And those were days when, when, when people played with baseball cards as opposed to putting them in little mylar sleeves and right. selling them. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It was a lot more fun. But it is true, early, uh, the first book I ever wrote was called Cards as Weapons, and uh, I do throw them with some accuracy and speed. You know what? I, I'll, I came up with a proposition bet based on this once. At some point, really? I'll show you this. Oh, yeah. great, great. I'll actually, uh, I've got that book. So we were talking about the idea that you could hustle someone before they even leave their house all the way through the game and hustle them again after the game. But perhaps the most famous prop that after a game is simply to cut high card double or nothing if you've been a loser. And, cut the card to win, and that's a piece that I do in my show, uh, 52 Assistants, and it's fun. But I'm going to show you something tonight that I uh, rarely do in public. Uh, it seems so preposterous, uh, I'm sure I can get uh, you guys to bet against me. So here's the idea. I have a glass, and I'm going to uh, pour some water in the glass. I think that's fine. And uh, I'm now going to show you something that will seem truly impossible. I'm going to take a playing card, the very cards that we've been using for this whole session, and uh, place one on top of this glass, right, just like this. And I'm going to take a second card and roll this up into a tube. And these are really they're the same cards you guys have been shuffling and that I've been dealing uh, all evening. And just to give this a little solidity, I'm going to put uh, an elastic band, a rubber band, around uh, the playing card, which I formed into, uh, into a tube. And I'm going to put that to on the card. And you know, you can take a look, the card covers almost, uh, almost the complete circumference of the glass, all right, which is very important. Because here's what I'm going to propose to you. I know this sounds crazy, but this is exactly what I'm going to propose to you. I'm going to propose to you that by balancing an egg, on this glass, you see that this glass is completely covered by the playing card. There's maybe uh, a sixteenth of an inch or so on each side. The bet is, if I throw a playing card, <laughs> I can make that egg land in the glass. Now, I want five cards. That's my bet. Five chances to do this. To throw a playing card and to make that egg wind up in the glass. Do I have any takers? Throw a playing card from the deck. From yeah, the deck. from right here. I'm not going to move. From right here, from this spot. What if I do it in just one shot, and I put the narrow end towards me? How about that? <laughs> That's the bet, an impossible bet. I'm going to throw the card. The egg will land in the glass. That's an egg. That's an egg, <laughs> That's an egg all right.